welcome to Vietnam Journal, our daily English news routine on NetVid VTC10. I'm just speaking from Hanoi. Every day we bring you comprehensive and up-to-date information on Vietnam and following major stories on Wednesday. Vietnam cast rates for the second time in a month. I will visit Vietnam's ancient Hualu Citadel. Foreign investors interested in Vietnam's banking M&A. Vietnam cut its interest rates on Wednesday for a second time in less than a month, as easing inflation gives the central bank room to bolster economic growth. Previously, policymakers ordered the nation's top four banks to lower borrowing costs from as high as 25% per annum, seeking to counter a foreign influence. The State Bank of Vietnam reduced the refinancing rate by one percentage point to 13% and cut the discount rate by the same amount to 11%, effective on April the 11th. The central bank also lowered the don deposit cap for terms of one month and above to 12% from 13%. Vietnam's economy expanded at the slowest pace since 2009 in the first quarter as bank lending declined and domestic demand weakened. This added pressure on the central bank to lower rates to spur growth. And following is some other economic news in brief. Vietnamese lender Vietin Bank received permission to transform its German branch into its first subsidiary bank in Europe on Monday. The entity in Germany had come into operation last September. The total investment of this transition is estimated at 50 million euros, half of which is the chartered capital. DGTV Corporation of Vietnamese Television Corporation recently signed a cooperation agreement with Germany-based communication company COMD to promote some TV programs to Vietnamese overseas. Two sides pledged to exchange their copyrighted programs and to take advantage of their current infrastructure and human resources to promote Vietnamese history and culture among Vietnamese in Germany and other European countries. COMD also commits to support VTC in promoting TV services to the Vietnamese community via Internet TV, IPTV and the website www.vtc.com.vn. In the first quarter of this year, goods transported by a Haiphong port in northern Vietnam reached nearly 11 million tons, bringing in revenue of 34.45 million US dollars. This is the highest revenue ever, rising by 22% on year. The results stem from renovation and marketing as well as Haiphong splash to enhance the speed of infrastructure and service investment. Entry to Ha Long Bay in the northern province of Quang Ninh will be free to all visitors from April the 20th to May the 1st during the Ha Long Tourism Week. This is a way of local authorities to thank the visitors for voting the bay as one of the seven new wonders of the world. Visitors to Ha Long Bay this year will also have the chance to enjoy a number of changes and improve the services at the site. Merger and acquisition in Vietnam's banking sector is currently one of the hot issues, attracting the attention of many local and foreign investors. Our NetVid VTC10 reporter have a conversation with Mr. Simon Taylor, special counsel of Baker and Marquesi Law Company in Vietnam. He shared his views of the legal framework for M&A activities in Vietnam's banking and financial market. Hello, Mr. Simon, and thank you so much for taking the time and being with us today. My pleasure. It's good to be here. What do you think about the pros and cons of Vietnam's banking and finance restructuring plan? Okay, I think that the first thing is the plan is necessary and it's quite a good plan. So Vietnam has too many banks in for the, the size of the uh, financial market and not all of the banks have a competitive advantage compared to the other ones in the market. They don't all have 
a differentiating factor. So it would make the local banks stronger and more efficient if they are able to consolidate to a slightly lower number of banks, each of which has a more particular focus and function in the market. Uh, having said that, I think that as with all very high level documents, the plan is also quite general. And so the, the devil will be in the detail. The implementation of that plan is going to be critical rather than just the existence of a good plan. So what do you think about the foreign investors' interest in M&A activities in Vietnam's banking and finance sector? I think that there is a lot of interest, but that interest in the banking and finance sector is limited more than most other sectors by regulation. So bank, foreign banks can come to Vietnam and set up 100% foreign-owned bank subsidiaries or foreign-owned bank branches, and we see them in the market already. But when it comes to investing into a Vietnamese bank, there are a number of uh, ownership limits. The most important of those is a cumulative 30% foreign ownership cap. And within that 30% cap, there's a 20% limit for foreign strategic investors. And that starts with a 15% basic limit, which can be extended to the 20% with Prime Minister approval. And already a lot of the major foreign banks in Vietnam have hit either the 15 or 20% limit. So that means if they want to take their plans forward, the law would have to change quite fundamentally. Um, so there may be more domestic interest in terms of the banking consolidation, at least in the short to medium term. But I think in the long term, the foreign investors will be very interested again, at the distribution networks, the bank branch networks that some of the Vietnamese banks have, when combined with the financial backing and the experience and the product development of the foreign banks, could again be very attractive. So what are the important factors that affect M&A activities in Vietnam this year? I think it, we'll have to wait and see how the deals progress, but access to enough financing to make sure that you can com uh, complete the deal will be important. And as you said at the beginning, the developments in the legal framework, if we can make deals happen more quickly, more efficiently, with less cost on the lawyer's side of things in completing procedures, it would uh, benefit everyone. And uh, once again, thank you very much for taking the time and joining us today. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Macro economy. Foreign investment, business, society and culture, arts, education, tourism, Vietnam Journal. It's not just news, it's life in Vietnam. A set of big bells and musical stones, which are instruments of Hue music court, known as Nya Nya, have been restored with the assistance of South Korea. The completion of the restoration coincided with the ongoing Hue Festival 2012. The instruments were restored in Hue City at the cost of 14,000 US dollars. Mr. Liu Hu Ti, 102 years old, the last instrumentalist of the Hue Royal Orchestra of the Nguyen Dynasty, the last feudal reign in Vietnam, tested the instruments. The instruments were repaired by Korean artisan Kim Hyun Kon and Vietnamese artisan Hoang Chok Chok within six months. Nha Nhak is a form of Vietnamese court music. It was recognized in 2005 by the UNESCO as a masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity. Vietnam and Korea will continue to restore another set of bells and musical stones to use at Satak and Nam Zao rituals. While it used to be a capital theater of Vietnam and is now a famous tourist destination, Today, we will visit the ancient city to learn about history. 
Hualu lies 110 kilometers or two hours from Hanoi. Located near the town of Ningbing, Hualu is the site of the 10th century capital of an ancient Vietnamese kingdom called Dai Co Viet. This small kingdom covered an area of only 300 hectares and reigned from the 10th century during the Ding and Le dynasties to the 11th century during the Li dynasty. The kingdom was enclosed by a citadel. Thanks to the Mayan limestone hill, the citadel was placed in good defense against the invasion forces. Năm 1967, Đinh Bộ Lĩnh thống nhất được ngày loạn 12 sư quân. Năm 1968 thì Đinh Bộ Lĩnh lên ngôi hoàng đế, đặt niên hiệu là nước đại của Việt, đóng đô ở Hoa Lư. Đây là một cái địa bàn mà núi non hiểm trở, đường có ưu thế về quân sự phòng ngự nên là cấu trúc của cái kinh đô hoa lư này nó bao gồm cái khu thành cũ ở phía bên trong này. Đấy. còn đây là cái khu đền đây là khu đền đây là đền đinh bên kia là đền đây the mountains and sea combined to make hoa lư's picturesque landscape Hoa Lu lays in a flat valley surrounded by the Chang'an limestone mountains, which form a natural wall protecting the old citadel. The city's northwest is bordered by the Huanglong River, the tributaries of which run through the capital, cooling the weather within the city and serving as convenient waterways. Not much of this ancient kingdom is left standing. Whatever that remains of the palaces and shrines would only be of interest to archaeologists. The royal court was built in an area of 150 hectares in the eastern part of the capital, while the western part served as a site to educate and protect children. The surrounding to be quite picturesque, with its ponds and limestone range forming a jagged horizon. There are two 17th century temples, modeled after their 11th century originals, that are on most initiaries to Hua Lu. They are the Ding Tian Huang Temple and Lei Huan Temple, dedicated to the founder of the Ding Dynasty and to its successor. Khác với lại thời lý sau này, tức là trong công cuộc xây dựng đất nước, đòi hỏi phải mở rộng cái 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 cái, cái bờ cõi ra và để cho nó dân cư nó đông đúc làm ăn nó thuận tiện thì mới chọn cái 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 đại la. Chứ còn đây là lúc đấy là cái nhiệm vụ phòng thủ đất nước là quan trọng. Cho nên là Đinh Tiên Hoàng mới chọn cái Hoa Lư làm kinh đô. Thế thì à, sau khi mà chọn kinh đô rồi thì ông cho xây dựng cái, cái uh, cung điện, cung điện và một số cái cơ sở chung quanh đây là các cái hang động thì có cái hệ thống phòng bảo vệ cái kinh đô này rất là nghiêm ngặt. Although Hualu was a strategic citadel surrounded by mountains and marshland that was difficult for invading armies to attack or conquer, Hualu was geographically too small and difficult for commerce and urban development to flourish. Under the rule of Li Thái Tô, that Viet's capital was moved from Hà Lu to Thăng Long, the modern-day Hanoi in 1010. Nowadays, Hà Lu is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Ninh Bình province. The story about the Vietnam's ancient capital high rock top our news bulletin for today. For comments and feedback, please send an email to nevedeli at gmail.com. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.